Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had something very, very beautiful. He used to call little children by their kunniyas. He wouldn't call them by their first names. He wouldn't say, oh Muhammad, oh Tawfiq, oh Ahsan, oh this and that. No. They wouldn't use his, he wouldn't use the first names. Do you know what he would use? He would use kunniyas. Don't you see what, what Rasulullah sallallahu said to Aba Umair? And Aba Umair, and this narration is reported by Bukhari in a mu'allak form, and this is connected by Ibn Hajar in, 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 in Taghliq al-Ta'liq, and is authentic. He said that Rasulullah sallallahu came to Umair, uh, to this boy, little boy, and he had a small bird, and a small bird in Arabic is called what? Nughair. A small bird in Arabic is called Nughair. And this Nughair was being naughty. This little bird was being naughty. He was, he was trying to fly out. So Rasulullah came to Abu Umair and said, Ya Abu Umair, ma fa'ala nughair. You might have heard of this. Ya Abu Umair, ma fa'ala nughair. But look, he called him what? He called him Abu Umair. And another narration, authentic narration in Bukhari as well, in Mu'allaq form as well. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was presented a beautiful piece of clothing, a, a piece of clothing, a nice piece of clothing from a, a person who had given him a gift. And so he said, bring Umm Khultum. He said, bring Umm Khultum here. Do you know who Umm Khultum was? Do you know who, who she was? She would no. She was a small baby of one of the companions. A small, small baby, just given birth. And Rasulullah SAW already called her what? Umm Kulthum, mother of Kulthum. And he called this little boy what? Aba, Aba Umair, father of Umair. Do you know how it changes the psychology of the little children when you call him father of so and so? Do you see how it makes them feel? Try it. Try it with your child. Try it with your little brother. SubhanAllah, when you call him, oh father of this and that, you say, what? I'm not a father. <laughs> But when you start saying them, you will see them changing. Ah, you're a father, remember you're a father. You have to, you can't be naughty now. Yeah, Abu Hamza. Your name's Abu Hamza, for example. Abu Hamza. If I call you Abu Hamza, you'll see the children changing. And Rasulullah SAW always used to call little children by their kunyas. This is something small, but this is something significant. Something small, but significant. That's one. Secondly, is by respecting their rights. And by giving them responsibilities. How many times do we see, for example, a, a little child in the first row? He bothered to come to the mosque in time and make it in the first row, and we see people coming late and saying, go back. We see people pushing them back. How do you think this little child is feeling? Say, this is my right, isn't it? Now, the person who comes first is his right, isn't it? So he came first, he wants to pray, let him pray. Rather we push him back. No, rather, brothers and sisters, respect the children. Respect their rights and you'll see them having respect for themselves. Growing up as individuals who respect themselves and having this manhood inside them. That is why Rasulullah in an authentic hadith in Bukhari, Rasulullah once came up to uh, a gathering and he was given a bowl of milk to drink, of goat's milk. And he drank a little bit of goat milk. And then after that, he saw to his right was a young boy and to his left was an old man. And so he asked this young boy, an authentic hadith in Bukhari, it states that Rasulullah asked this young boy and said, Oh so and so, Ya, wa, ya, ya waladi, oh little boy, do you permit me to give this milk to the old person first? And this, old, and this young boy said, No Ya Rasulullah. He said, No Ya Rasulullah. Yeah. And so Rasulullah smiled and he gave the milk to the young boy first. Because obviously you go from the right. Imagine that, respecting the rights of the children. Now imagine this boy, don't you think he's going to also give the rights to the, to the people when he grows old? <coughs> Naam, subhanallah, very, very important, very, very important. Another important thing, brothers and sisters in Islam, is to tell them the stories of the heroes of Islam. Is to tell them the stories of the great heroes, the abtal of Islam, the great, st great stories of the great Salaf and the great pious predecessors. Tell them the stories how they were true men. How they did not need to prove their manhood. Uh, from, from teaching the kids uh, uh, manhood is also something which is easily forgotten. And that is to toughen your kid up. Ma'am, toughen your child up. I know, mashallah, he is the apple of your eye. He is the heartbeat of your heart. I know that, I know that. You don't, have to, you don't have to tell me, I have children too. I love them more than anything else. 
However, if you are a wise man, if you are a wise parent, then you will know that the world outside is not as nice as you are. It is not as comforting as you are. The world is full of hardship. So toughen your child up. Toughen them up. Don't put them all these luxuries, mashallah. We have the be- most beautiful of, of, of beds we buy them, and the most nicest of, 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 of uh, uh, dunas, and the most softest of pillows, and we buy them the nicest of clothes, every day new clothes. Subhanallah, what do you think this child is going to grow up thinking? He is going to grow up thinking that this life is a life of, uh, is a bed of roses. He's going to think, think that everything is so easy. Everything, my mom will be there. Everything will be spoon-fed to me. My bed will be full of rose petals and then rose, rose syrup, mashallah. It's going to smell nice. No, this is not the reality. This is not the reality, brothers. Toughen them up. And it is for this reason why Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he used to say, teach your children horse riding. He used to say what? Teach your children horse riding. And teach them how to shoot arrows, archery. And teach them swimming. And teach them poetry. SubhanAllah, make them men. Because when you swim and you, you, you get confidence that you can float. And you have confidence and, and it actually affects your soul and it actually affects your psychology and your character. When you're riding a horse, you're controlling an animal bigger than you. This also increases your, your, your strength of character and your fear, removes the fear in your heart. My child in Medina, since he was three years old, he has been riding a horse every single day. <laughs> now, a white horse and he still says, Baba, let's go back to that horse. We don't have horses now here. We only have ponies. When they see the child, they say, no, we can't put him on a big horse. No, but this is, look at it, brothers and sisters, Islam. It is not the fact that we're talking about riding horses, but the fact that we're talking about how to build their character. How to make them true men. How to realize and strengthen their character. And really when you show them that they can control a horse, they can control an animal ten times bigger than them, then truly you will see that they will be able to control the anger and control other people and be a leader in the community, not be a follower, not be an Indian, rather be the chief. Right. And the last thing uh, that I wanted to talk about regarding how to make men out of our children is to teach them manners is to teach them manners and the best way, brothers and sisters in Islam, is for you to be a, an, an example. How do you wish for your child to be a man when you're not a man? Do you want your child to grow up thinking that you are effeminate? That you are feminine somehow? No. If you wish your child to be of strong character, so must you also be of strong character. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, I, ask, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to bring back this true manhood to this ummah, just as he had bestowed this upon the companions of Rasulullah and those after him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the 500 million men of this ummah realize their potential, their greatness, their ability, their strength, and to let them not limit themselves by their lack of goals, by the lack of understanding, by the lack of motivation, and by the lack of knowledge about their own capacity and their own ability. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this ummah and make, make the ummah shine just as it has done before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best.